Hey, everybody, it's Stephanie with The Learning Project. Guys, we are back again with another great podcast. I want to thank you so much for joining us on this journey. You guys, we are in search of some amazing people in our community that are doing great things to make a difference in so many lives. And I really wanted to just take this time to highlight some of those individuals that you can connect with and we can learn more from. You know, in our Spokane community, we are a very small community. And within that small community, there is a a very small group of minorities in our community that are that have businesses, nonprofits, and this month we're really going to be highlighting those those groups and being able to talk with them about what they're doing, what are some of their challenges, and how they're supporting others. So I want to welcome Michael to our platform. Thank you for being What's here. Up? What's up? Um, you guys, how are you doing? You Thanks know, for having me. Oh, thank you. So Michael and I met a long time ago and we just like, you know, how it's crazy. Like when your paths go through and you're like, oh, you know, I know that person. Oh, I didn't know they do this. And then you start finding out more and more and more things about a person. This is kind of like with Michael, I've seen um, some of his work that he's done. And I really think that he would be a great person for us to talk to today. So Michael, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, we'll go from there. Oh, thank you, Courtney, first and foremost, for having me. I, I'm, I'm grateful. Appreciate it. Um, I'm always uh, down for the opportunity to just sp spread what I'm doing, I don't, you know, one, but then also contribute to other people's causes and, and missions and visions. Yeah. Um, myself, I am a, uh, uh, I'm, I'm a community, I'm a servant. I'm a mm -hmm. servant um, at heart and an entrepreneur and such as well. And I, I just want to be able to serve the community, do it creatively, do it with um, uh, the opportunity and the resources that I, I'm able to give people a platform, but at the same time, be able to just create something that people enjoy and bring joy to people. I'm a real, um, I'm, I'm, I'm the type that I, I really believe that each and every one of us are here for a reason and like, and, and helping tap into that purpose and to that potential of individuals mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by any means through entertainment, through um, just conversation, interaction, all of that. And so um, I've been here in Spokane since I graduated high school. I came back in 2002. So that's almost 20 years that I've been so where'd back. Where'd you come was, back from? Where'd you come back yeah, from? So I was born, actually. I was born here in Spokane. Okay. I was born here uh, when I was about six, six, seven. We moved um, to Arkansas. Okay. And and then we moved around a little bit to uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Memphis, Tennessee. And I would come back and forth here every now and then. Mm -hmm. Like I went to middle school here for about a year or two, elementary a year or two. So I, I traveled a lot. I was a military um, brat, but I wasn't. So mm -hmm. <laughs> without the military. <laughs> kind of thing. Um, uh, so, yeah, I came back from Arkansas. I ended up going to high school in Arkansas, mm -hmm. came back to Spokane, uh, been here. My plan was to be here for about a year, went to Eastern, um, and then to transfer and go somewhere else. But, yeah. uh, I got, I got stuck in that Spokane, uh, black hole that it's a beautiful thing. I have, you know, I have yeah. nothing wrong with it. Nothing's wrong with it. I have nothing against it, but yeah, it wasn't my initial plans, but, um, it was cool because I have family here, my dad, my sister's, grandparents all of them have been here so it's been able to uh just it was a reason for me to be here then and then I, I met my beautiful wife yes. um and and we've had three we have three beautiful boys um so we we it, it's it's here I'm, I'm excited here Spokane's my home and uh, I'm able I'm glad for the opportunity to be able to bring some hopefully bring some change and some some light into the situation so that's yeah. me in a nutshell I love it. I'm so glad that you shared your journey with us because I think so many times, you know, people are like, how do people end up staying here or get here? Yeah. Um, what has kept you here? Like you have an amazing family and, you know, what was the thing that you were like, you know what, I'm going to stay here in this community and try to make a difference. Yeah. Well, again, I mean, it, it's Spokane's home because I was born here and because I have roots. My, my grandfather's a pastor. Mm -hmm. he's been, a, he's been a pastor here for almost 40 years. I think 40 yeah. years is coming up. And so that was one of the big parts um, of being here with them, with my grandparents and being able to help out wherever I could mm -hmm. uh, once school was done. Uh, but I, what's kept me here has been that 
and then a mixture of there's been roots and a foundation that that has been set um, uh-huh. that I've, I've been able to establish just because of relationships and um, uh, and that I've been able to develop over the years. And, and I mean, I just I think Spokane has a big, big has a lot of potential, has a lot yeah. of opportunity, especially on the entrepreneurial side. Uh-huh. Um, and that's one thing that that I used to get a lot with that question, like, Mike, why are you still here? Why are you still yeah. here? And I was like, I'd rather be here and create something versus go somewhere where it's already saturated and that's I'm competing it. against it. And yeah. so that's that's why I stay. Um, that's why I'm still here. Um, and then until God that tells me otherwise, I'm, I'll be here for a while. Man, you just hit like a huge nail for me because I ended up staying here for the same reason. My husband's from Georgia and he was like, I'm not staying in Spokane. And I lived in New Jersey for a long time and that was home for me. And I was like, I'm not staying in Spokane. And you find something really unique in Spokane and you're like, you know what? I want to make a difference. I want to make a change. I want to bring something new to the community to help it grow and to help it flourish in a way that it hadn't before. And so, you know, when we think about when we think about our own personal journeys that you guys are listening you know many of you guys are creatives and sometimes that can get really discouraging when you're like you know you don't see the the movement you don't see the support sometime um but you have this dream so michael tell us a little bit about you actually have two businesses so tell us a little bit about both of them and how did they develop yeah um so i have bethany entertainment group which has been the was the first business that i that i started back in 2009 um the the premise behind bethany entertainment group was like i said before is that i I enjoy people right i enjoy entertaining people and i enjoy being an inspiration in some way form or fashion and what bethany entertainment was focused on was doing that through entertainment Mm -hmm. being able to create a platform for not only to to feed into others through uh, comedy shows or open mic nights or video, and the plan is to do movies and short films wow, eventually and TV awesome. shows. Um, yeah, there's, uh, it's exciting that it's been a plan for about twelve years, but we're we're wow. getting there. we're we're getting there. Yeah, um, yeah. But but just inspiring people um, mm-hmm. is has what is what it's uh, really based on. Um, Bethany Entertainment, B-E. Uh, my, my mission is to inspire, encourage, and motivate people to be. Mm-hmm. Like I said earlier as well, is that I'm, I'm one that believes that each and every person has a, has a purpose. And yeah, um, wanting to be able to encourage people to be them best selves, be who you were made to be. And so doing that, using entertainment as a platform for that inspiration yeah. um, and or a platform for that growth for them. So... Uh, I used to have, we did open mic nights where it was where people would come out and talented, talented individuals with yes. music, singing, dancing, poetry. Um, we, we had art. We had a lot yes. of different variety of things. And what I have house to band. interrupt you. I have to interrupt you. He's being <laughs> so modest right now, y'all. Uh, Let me tell you this. I, okay. So I went to a couple of these and like the vibe, the feel, the connection, it, you brought something so unique and it was it's so needed especially for a niche yeah. of people I feel like that 30 to 40 group you know sometimes we can kind of get left out and feel like there's not a niche for us or a place for us and let me tell you when I would go I would be I would see people that I hadn't seen for like years um coming to your event so I just want to to say thank you so much for doing that because I know that is a lot of work. And so you guys, when you came to this event, a lot of times, one, it was already it was already set. The vibe was ready. You had coffee, you had snacks on this. I mean, it was like a really nice coffee shop, urban vibe. Like it was yeah. amazing. Yeah. And and that and you you spoke uh, on on the vibe. Like that was a big part. That's a big part of just people enjoying themselves is the vibe yeah. is, is, is the atmosphere and, and being able to create that atmosphere, that welcoming atmosphere, that uh, a warm atmosphere is a big part of what we're trying to, what we try to do mm-hmm. um, with, with every event. Um, mm-hmm. The, the open mic night, we had the house band sessions, shout out to sessions, smooth yes. jazz, um, <laughs> you know, and, and they created it. They created a dope vibe that just allowed people to just get comfortable. Um, and, and even when it comes to, 
if I'm emceeing an event or hosting an event that someone else asked me to host, I'm yeah. just, it's about creating that vibe and getting them comfortable and allowing them the opportunity to just enjoy mm -hmm. what it is they're about to experience mm -hmm. and just feel inspired. Be. Just, be. <laughs> just be. Just be. Just be. So um, that, that has been a driving force behind it. Now, admittedly, there's, um, I, I dream big. And so there's a lot of, uh, of barriers that I came across because of, of the dreams being so big and not being able to really pinpoint like a demographic or a particular niche, which I don't want to do because I feel like everybody needs to be inspired in some way, yes. form or fashion. But yes. um, on, on the business side, it definitely doesn't doesn't help for growth and for for honing it in. So mm -hmm. those are things that that's why it's been 2009 to now just trying to hone all of that in. Um, yeah. But there's there's growth on the way um, well there has been growth on the way and then there's growth to come too so yeah. um, I'm excited because with Bethany Entertainment Group uh, like I said mentioned before is that just TV shows and short films film feature -led films all this video production um, this we're about to revamp and and relaunch all, a lot of what we're doing in that realm mm -hmm. creating content um, and I mean with with tools and the resources we have today with internet and and you know, um, it's, it's, it's accessible, easily yeah. accessible. Um, and then just tapping into all these creatives around, like saying, yeah. you know, pe giving people that platform again, writing, writing scripts, writing, um, plays, uh, yeah. writing movies, whatever it is, painting art, let's, let's get creative with it. That's right. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah. And, and so I, I've been blessed to be the opportunity to work at our public access channel here, uh, in, in Spokane, community minded television. What? And so, yeah, and that's that's my that's my gig. I love <laughs> that's my it. gig for now. But it, it's also it's all tying together where there's this, there's that platform to inspire people to come be creative and, and yeah. get get your content on on TV or how can we help you learn how to um, uh, produce and 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 uh, get into production. So I love it. I love it. You guys, I don't know who needs to hear this, but you know, I just want to remind you, your dream is never um out of reach you know what I mean I mean when I'm listening to what you're talking about Michael and you're talking about dreaming big and then people telling you to dream small and you know mm. people be discouraging and really tell you you ain't nothing you can't do this or they say that sly stuff such as your little business you know mm. I just want to say <laughs> you struck just, a nerve right there right. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you have to remember that, you know, your dream and your vision is for you. It's not, it's not mm -hmm. for anybody else. You know what I mean? Right. And it's up to us as individuals to fulfill that vision, fulfill that dream and really find people that are looking for that. Because so many people are, especially creatives. And I think that's why a lot of people leave Spokane, because they don't feel like there's that creative niche here. Um, right. When it is here, we just have to like grow that until it, it's not something that's mm -hmm. going to be easy. We have to right. really work together and not look at each other as competition all the time or, right. you know. There can only be one person that's doing this. Like we need a collective group of people that are able to not only share their dream and project their dream, but live that dream, support that dream. Right. And, and as uh, Michael says, be, you know, be who you are. Mm. It, it's, yes. That, that whole, that whole motto that you have is so powerful. It's so powerful. Mm -hmm. Um, and so where are you guys now? Like, where are you at in this process of your business? So with, with Bethel Entertainment, um, I'm, we're at a point where I had set it aside. Like I was uh, working full time right before COVID hit uh, at, at, a, um, at, at a university. And I had felt led to, to let it go. And, and I was going to focus on Bethel Entertainment and build um, also the, the basketball team, the Lilac City Legends. And mm. then as soon as I, I, I quit in, just in January, February prepping, got had a bunch of gigs lined up, everything's going. And then March happened, 2020, <laughs> COVID happened. And that just wiped everything away. Wow. It was discouraging, you know, but you know, like uh, there's a plan. There's a plan. Yeah. Being a man yeah. of faith, it's it's like you gotta you gotta walk in that faith and and, and walk with it. So um uh with that, I put Bethany Entertainment to the side a little bit um and mm -hmm. started focusing on the Lilac City Legends because I was like, well, this. It's going to give me a year, a year or so to, to really build mm -hmm. using this downtime because I thought 
when that was put on my heart, I was like, wow, that's why hasn't anybody done this yet? And I, I was um, confused. So I'm, I'm going to go into this second business, if that's okay. okay. Yeah, and I, please. Uh, so, <laughs> so the Lilac City Legends is a men's professional basketball team. And so be, being here in Spokane, which has been recently dubbed Hooptown USA, yeah. right? Um, yeah. a, a, a mecca of basketball. You have Gonzaga, you have Hoop Fest, you have um, just a, a, an array of basketball coming yes. out of the, yes. the place. Why, yes. why don't we have a professional team? And I did some research and there are, um, people will call it minor league teams, which it is. It's not the NBA. We're not, it's, it's, we're not that, there yet. Um, right. But, um, but there are a lot of minor league teams that, that have, that can contribute to the community, but also give you entertaining and competitive and uh, uh, exciting basketball. Mm -hmm. And me, being a lover of basketball, like I love basketball. I know I'm five five, but I play like I'm six five. Right, like, you tell them. You know you who tell knows? Them. So tell I got a six five heart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I love the game. Um, and then going back, I love seeing people smile. I love connecting with people. Mm -hmm. I love entertaining people, and bringing them joy. And so I was like, that's just what other better way to do that? To, again, is to create a team that is not only giving back to the community through um, services and, mm -hmm. and programs, mm -hmm. um, but also being able to entertain the community with the game that a lot of us like, like, yeah. you know, basketball. Um, and so I created the Lilac City Legends um, with the same foundation of Bethany Entertainment. Mm -hmm. the, on, the, the mission for the Lilac City Legend is to honor, encourage, inspire, and create legends within the community yeah. because each and every one of us are legends in our own right. Mm. that's that purpose that's that purpose I love part it. i love it I and love so it. using that as a platform basketball as the platform to say okay or, or this basketball team as a platform to encourage people to 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 get into programs um that we can legacy living right like mm -hmm. healthy living um yeah. little legends encouraging the young young individuals um but also tapping into uh, other uh, community service um, initiatives and being able to just impact the community as a whole yeah. and build our community, yes. um, particularly the, I mean, the, the black community, um, uh, being able yeah. to just give them opportunities as well to, to just flourish and, um, uh, just feel, feel involved and feel a part of it. Mm -hmm. Nothing against the, uh, like Gonzaga for, for instance, like the great basketball team, yeah. a great community that they have, but it's, it's an exclusive, it's an exclusive um club yeah. so to speak yeah and so the legends being a com a team that's for the co with excuse me that is for the community yeah in a way that the community can embrace the team Absolutely. and so yeah there's um, a difference there's a there, there really is a difference yeah um and i'm glad that you highlighted that because i think a lot of people are not talking about that you know right. um and so yeah i didn't mean to interrupt because but i need to say that definitely need yeah. to say that yeah, and it's it it is it's true um, that it's just there's an exclusivity and it's I mean and it's okay because they yeah. they worked hard to get where they are absolutely like not absolutely. taking anything from them but they're let's 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 have something for the rest of the community as well yeah. in addition yeah. to that or instead of that whatever they choose but let's have something for the community and I think um, this opportunity to be able to just create um, this platform and this 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 product, so to speak, mm -hmm. that people mm -hmm. can be inspired through and they can enjoy. Um, that's the goal. And, and, and again, you can see that it, it, it lines up with Bethany Entertainment and, mm -hmm. and the mission there as well. So mm -hmm. um, it's all cohesive. Yeah, I, I love where this is going. So what is your your hope and your dream for um, your your Lilac Legends? Like what is the the ultimate dream and what would this vision look like? <sighs> So it, it, it initially in, in, in the brainstorming process, it was, man, we can become the, uh, the affiliate team for the Seattle Supersonics. When they come back, we can be the G League team for that, mm -hmm. uh, for them. Um, and then just really impacting the community with everything that we're doing, right? We're just yeah. being everywhere, partnerships with businesses, organizations, nonprofits. Yeah. Um, being a for-profit with a nonprofit mindset, ultimately. Yes. Um, yeah. it's, it's altered a little bit, whereas like G League may not be the, the um, final 
uh, picture. I think we could have a huge impact outside of that. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Being just an in independent professional team, being able to travel, being able to impact and let people know about Spokane and, and yeah. um, bring, bring even more awareness to the Lilac City. Um, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and then again, going back to being able to just impact that immediate community and, and saying, yeah. hey, here is an opportunity for you to um, be a part of this program that we're partnering with such and such organization. Hmm. And reaching out to them and saying, "Hey, we're trying to better our community yeah. with, with what we're doing." Um, yeah. and it's it's bigger than basketball. Basketball is a main part of it, but it's bigger than basketball. And so my my dream is that we can all we can come together and uh, be able to just accomplish those things. Man, um, I I love this. I love the idea that you have, and I love that you're putting it into play because I do think that we are missing a certain positive element for people to get involved with. Um, and everybody knows sports will bring people together. That's just like right. a natural like gravitation, right? But yeah. being able to say, hey, you know what? We have this, but in addition to this, we also have this that can help you develop and grow as an individual, as a mm -hmm. person. And mm -hmm. I love that you're not just focusing on younger people. You're focusing, or younger children. You're focusing on adults as well. Because yeah. again, that I feel like when, <laughs> when I was done with high school and I was kind of that 18 to 21 transition it was rough because yeah. you really didn't have like that connection um the way you have maybe in high school with some of your friends you're making a lot of right. different transitions depending on if you're going to college or not um uh, and even if you are going to college you still need that support team that support yeah. group to help you get yeah. to the next step and I think that what you're talking about is exactly that piece which is that support the mentorship the coaching the um being able to elevate and grow as a person that may or may not be in sports so right. um, and you're not right. you're not leaving it just to one area i like that yeah and 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 i think so remember i was telling you like how beth entertainment i've had advisors and people tell me you know it's too broad you have too too big of a vision mm -hmm. well with the basketball thing it's it's basically exactly what I was hoping to do is because of the spectrum of people who love the game, right? Yeah. You can impact from two to 99 yeah. and um, being able to create those partnerships with these organizations that are already doing it instead of, like you said earlier, everybody thinking that this one person has to do yeah. it with this one person. Let's team up. Yeah. Let's create something so we can build the, the um, build the community. And, and one, one point is financial literacy, like our mm. community, um, I know for even for myself is something yeah. that I didn't get out, you know, that I needed that didn't yeah. have that need. And so like we we've in, in talks with Canopy Credit Union because they creating um, financial literacy opportunities for mm -hmm. not only for our team and the guys on our team, but for the community and being able to impact the community through that, because that's something that the, our community needs is, yeah. is being able to be prepared to grow, be prepared to build wealth be prepared to, to, to plant seeds for their families. And that's, mm. that's the hope. That's the hope. Oh, man, you guys, I don't know who needs to hear this, but let me tell you, my soul is so fed by this conversation because a lot of times we're missing the conversation. We're not talking about how businesses are impacting the community and growing. And I love that you're talking about your vision and what you're looking to do. You may not right be there right now, but you're speaking it into existence. And I think that's one of the things that so many people are afraid to say out loud is what they really want and what they're hoping right. to do. You know, right. um, when you're like in that position, because you you have a very, very uh, strategic vision um, and it's growing and developing. How do you stay focused on what you're trying to do um, with it being a long-term goal and you also have short-term goals that you're trying to complete. What do you do to, to keep yourself really focused and building that dream? That's interesting you ask that because um, that's one of the challenges for myself because I'm such a dreamer is, is staying focused on one thing. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's part of the growth that I've been going through with this process is being able to hone it in. Okay, with this, we have to set this goal. We have to yeah. focus on what it takes to uh, accomplish this. And 
ultimately what I've been doing is surrounding myself with people who can contribute to the, the, the needs that I, that I need ultimately. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm so used to doing things by myself and doing things where it's like, okay, I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. I can yeah. do that. I can do that. Yeah. But I'm, I've had to, I've had to step back and realize, okay, I need help. Who can I, who can I call on? Who can I yes. collaborate yeah. with? Who can I partner with to, to help and them and, and know that they have good intentions behind yes. it as well. Uh, and, 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 and are willing to help without thinking that, um, I don't know, there's just something about sometimes people think that, that you're out to get, I don't, I don't yeah. know. I'm still trying no, to figure you, it out. You, but, you, you, hit, you hit it right on the head. You just literally said literally everything we've been talking about. I don't trust you. You cannot help me. You're not doing it right. You got negative motivation. It's like within like our community sometimes that mentality is there and yeah. it's like how do you break that how do you even yeah. how do you have an open dialogue about it and just be like look this is where we're at we need to work better together with as a community and we we really need to be honest about what we're feeling and confront those feelings so that we yes. can move forward and do what we want to do in our community you you hit in uh, love. i don't know who need to hear that in, in, in love though that's that's the that's yeah. i think that's the detriment behind it is because everybody thinks that there's a ill will behind the conversation yes. Like, no, let's have this conversation with the intention of building each other up so that you know that this is where I'm at. I want to work with you. I love you. I want us to succeed. I want us to succeed. Us. Yes. Us. Yes. Let let us work together so that we can get it. And um, I think that gets lost in translation for some unknown reason. But I, Mm -hmm. I mean, there could be some contributing factors in the past that have allowed that to happen. Yep. Um, but we're here, we're here now in a new time and, and place, yep. and we need to become, uh, willing, <laughs> willing. Um, I know for me, myself, again, going back, like I need to hum, I had to humble myself. There's things mm-hmm. that I, I feel like I knew a lot of, but I don't, um, yeah. or that, yeah. that it just didn't work and mm-hmm. collaborating with people, um, has opened up my eyes to a lot of things that I need to understand more. And I'm grateful for it. Yeah. I may have frustrated them in the process. I've gotten frustrated in the process, right. but at the end of the day, let's, let's figure this out and let's grow together. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, really that's, that's where the, 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 the depth of my learning has come from um, as far as just focusing on that, because I know that me as a man individually need, I need, I have improvements to make as yeah. a person. Yeah. And I I'm constantly wanting to learn in the process. Um, pride does get in the way at times. I admittedly mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I've I, I'm grateful because I've been able to identify that. And then yeah. I've built relationships where those people can say, hey, Mike, you're being prideful. Hmm. Oh, OK. Thank you. Thank you for thank you for that. Like yep. I'm, I'm, I'm that willing to out. accept that. I'm willing to accept that. Yeah. OK, I'm going to try to change. And right. if you don't see me changing. <laughs> Call me out again. I don't mind out, being yeah. called out, I, but I want. I, That's so yeah. me. And and but I want to do it in a, in a way that we're building each other up and not tearing each other down. So exactly, um, exactly, exactly. So. There's a, a it's my own phrase that I make, but it's like this: know it all, have to be right, have to be the leader at all times, have to be able to have your hands in everything at all times. Um, when you're creative you get very protective over your content, you know, over yeah. your baby, yeah. you know, it's my baby. Um, yeah, exactly. You ain't gonna <laughs> let anybody just watch kids. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so, you know, getting to that point of saying, you know what, I need more. I'm going to have to let this guard down that I've had up for so long. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's time for us to move forward and make this happen. And along the way, sometimes it can be really hard and it can be really messy. Um, and that is what I really want you guys to hear is just wherever, wherever you are in your creative journey, your business journey, you know, sometimes you have to take um, certain principles and certain key reflections. And in order to make these things happen and that you want to happen, you're going to have to implement some things that are very uncomfortable and you're going to have to get uncomfortable with yourself thinking a certain way because you know that I have to do this. This is a part of me being a leader. This is a part of me um, being able to step into my purpose. 
there's all these different pieces that go along with with business and uh, with creating a, a dream, you know, making a dream into an action and making that action into a visible uh, mm-hmm. representation of what you want to do in the future for your community. Um, Michael, you know, we have talked a lot about, um, you know, your businesses that you have, what you hope to do. Um, what is the one thing that you want our listeners to hear before we end our podcast series? <laughs> um, a wise man once said, no, I'm, I'm about to quote myself. And when I do that, I, I say a wise man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My wife is like, oh, she's rolling her eyes. Now I can see it. Um, one thing, one thing I've learned, there's no progress if there's no process. Mm. um and uh and there's another thing that i have cause in my poems there's you got to tread through dirt you have to tread through dirt in order to have a path to follow mm. and those things the, those have been a driving force because i understand that like you have to be sometimes you have to be broken down to be built back up wow um and and understanding that accepting that and being willing to grow from every situation good bad ugly cute happy, sad, joy, like being willing to, to grow from every in- interaction or every um, opportunity is important. It's yeah. so important because if you're not growing, if you're a seed that's been planted, you need to be watered yeah. and water. Sometimes the water may look not, it, it may not be water that you like. Yeah. <laughs> it may not yeah. be water that you like, but yeah. receive the water and, and go through that process so that you can progress as a person as like you said, as a leader, as a business owner, as just a human being, yeah. um, that, and then I, I, as being a man who I really value character, I value mm. integrity. Mm. Um, I think it's important for people to just continue to be in- integral in what they're doing, Absolutely. Um, especially in, in, um, developing relationships with other business owners and organizations, because I, I personally feel like that has, has been what's helped me be elevated thus far because mm-hmm. of those relationships mm-hmm. and because I've, I've been a man of character uh, and, and one who is trying to be honest and transparent and um, integral in what I do. Absolutely. Oh man. I, that was, let me tell you, thank you wise man. That, <laughs> that was good. That was good. That was good. <laughs> And I'm going to tell you, myself wise. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I'm going to start calling you the wise man. I'm like the wise yeah. man. They're the wise man. <laughs> but you know, the thing that I think everybody has to remember is that the process that you said, like being a business owner, walking into your dream and your purpose, it is the most scariest and terrifying thing that you will ever do. Um, but it's one of the most like beautiful things that you will ever do because you will see yourself unfold like never before. Right. And, and you find all of these things that are within you that you didn't even know that were there, you know, Mm -hmm. and, you know, it takes time. It takes persistence. And exactly what you said, it takes that perseverance. You've got to tread through this thing. Yeah, um, Michael, I want to thank you so much for being on this podcast, no. y'all. Thank you. I am grateful. I appreciate that. I really uh, do. I really do. Man, I want to know, how can we support you? Where can we find you? If people were like, you know what? I need a coach. I need the production. I need basketball. <laughs> I need something. I need, I need a coaching something. call. I need all of it. <laughs> Where can they find you? Where they where can they connect with you? Um, you you can reach out and follow the Lilac City Legends. Follow us on Instagram, awesome. um, Facebook. Um, I think we're on TikTok and uh, all those new. I'm old. I'm old. I'm older <laughs> now. I just, so we on the TikTok. We on the TikTok and we on the uh, Twitter. We on that Twitter. Um, <laughs> Lilac City Legends. Uh, follow us on those and lilaccitylegends.com. Uh, where you can you can check us out and, and stay up to date with what we're having, what we're awesome. going on with the team. Um, we're actually in the playoffs right now of this first season, so we're hoping to be able to to uh, to to move on, move forward, win this PBA championship, and then Love our it. ABA ABA season starts in November. So um, it. it's it's going to be pretty exciting. And then just me personally, Mr. Bethley on Instagram, 
Michael Bethley on Facebook, uh, where you can just tap in. Uh, I love, I love you even before I know you. Let's let's let's, let's connect. So. There it is, y'all. You want the connections? You want to get together, support one another? This is our chance to do this. Whatever way we can support, connect, grow as leaders, creators, all of it, you guys. I want to thank you so much again for being here, Michael. And you guys, I want to thank you for listening. I appreciate you guys coming week after week, listening to all of my really random podcasts. Whatever comes up, I want to talk about it. You know how I do. And I just want to thank you guys so much for taking the time also to share the podcast, you guys. Don't worry if you're driving, you don't have a piece of paper or pencil, do not worry. All of the information is going to be right below this podcast. You can watch us on YouTube. You can watch this on Anchor. Um, There's tons of different uh, platforms with on that. You guys, thank you so much. I want to just say, remember, we're going to have more podcasts coming up. If you're interested in being on one of the podcasts, you know, hit me up, let me know. I would love to have you here talking about your business and your dream. Until next time, you guys, talk to you later. Bye. Thank you.